The following video is a step-by-step -step guide for creating STL files from echocardiography datasets suitable for 3D printing. We will discuss how to extract datasets from the echo machine, how to use our website to convert those datasets to the .nrrd file type, and finally, how to use 3D Slicer to generate STL files. The following section will describe how to extract raw 3D data out of QLab. The first step is to ensure that raw 3D data is set to be exported on your machine. On the Philips IE33 machine keyboard, press the Setup button on the top row. This is a screen that comes up. Here, click Print Network on the sidebar and then click Media. Make sure under 3D, Export 4D and Matrix 3D slash 4D volume data is selected. Now you're ready to export raw 3D data. After acquiring your 3D image from your patient, select the Send To button on the bottom of the screen. This brings you to a screen that allows you to select the destination. That may be your USB drive, DVD, or to an external server. Once the data is exported, open up QLab. Then open up your patient's file that you have just exported. Right-click the image and, and under Analyze With, select 3D Q. This brings you to the 3DQ homepage. At the bottom left corner of the screen, select the film strip symbol that allows you to save the data. Under Data Type, select Cartesian DICOM. You should end up with a file size in the order of 100 megabytes and above. The website that we have designed easily converts DICOM ECHO datasets into an NRRD file type that can be used to create an STL file for 3D printing. The link to this website can be found in the supplemental materials section of our manuscript. Once the DICOM file has been downloaded from the ECHO machine and the specific frame of interest has been determined, you are ready to begin the file conversion process. In the middle of the screen on the site, you will see a link that says, select a multi-frame DICOM file. Click on this link to load the DICOM file from its storage location on your computer. After clicking the link and selecting the file, the loading process occurs automatically. Once loaded, a second drop-down menu appears on the site below the select a multi-frame DICOM file link. The new drop-down menu prompts you to choose a frame. This is the specific frame of interest in the 4D dataset that you are interested in printing. The frame is generally a specific point in the cardiac cycle. When using Philips datasets in the QLab software, you can find the frame number using the stop play buttons and panning to the point in time in which you are interested. The numbers will be listed on the screen near the stop play buttons towards the bottom of the screen. Select your desired frame from the drop-down menu. Once selected, the website will automatically process the dataset. A third and final link now appears on the site, giving you the option to download the NRRD file. Save the file to a desired location. This completes the description of how to use this website. Three D Slicer is a free open source program that can be downloaded from www.slicer.org. Slicer is a powerful and complex program that can take some time to learn. The following description is the process that we use and is not the only path in Slicer to generating an STL file suitable for printing. We'll avoid going into too much detail of the specifics of the program and focus on the steps that we take in order to create our models. After installing and opening the 3D Slicer program, the first step in generating an STL file is to load the NRRD file from our website into Slicer. This is done by selecting the Load Data button. When the Add Data into the Scene box appears, click the Choose Files to Add button. Select the NRRD file. Then click Open. 
Now select OK to load the data into Slicer. Now that the data set is loaded, from the Modules drop-down menu, select the Volume Rendering Module. The active volume will be the name of the file that you selected. In each viewing box, click on the crosshair icon to center the volume and automatically size it. Our preference is to use the 4-up view for the process of making the model. Now activate ROI visibility by clicking the button that looks like a closed eye next to the text Display ROI. The region of interest will now be displayed in the red, yellow, and green boxes. Adjust the size of the boxes to approximate the volume that you will print. After selecting the volume dimensions, enter the Crop Volume module located in the All Modules link. Click the Crop button within the Crop Volume module to remove the volume you no longer wish to be present. After selecting Crop, enter the Editor module from the Modules drop-down menu. The master volume will now be called Subvolume Scale Underscore 1. This is the cropped volume. We are no longer working with the full volume. You may choose to save your cropped NRRD file at this time to eliminate steps for reprocessing purposes. To threshold the volume, mouse over the area that you desire to print. As you mouse over the images, you will notice changing numbers under the data probe heading towards the bottom left of the screen. The number of interest for the purpose of thresholding is at the end of the B row in bold. Appreciate the number that correlates with the lowest value included in the tissue that you desire to print. The value is generally in the 60 to 70 range. In the Edit Selected Label Map section of the Editor module, there is an option to select the label. Any label can be used. Our preference is 29, Gas. The label can be changed by clicking on the colored button in the Label section of the Edit Selected Label Map tool. After choosing your desired label, click the Threshold Effect button. It is the fifth button on the second row of buttons in the Edit Selected Label Map section of the module. You will see the areas of the volume that fall in the default threshold range light up in the color of the selected label. Scroll down in the module to modify the threshold range. By changing the lower value, any region below the selected number will be excluded from the print. When you are satisfied, click Apply. Now select the Make Model Effect button under the Edit Selected Label Map heading. After selecting the Make Model Effect button, select Go to Model Maker. This will take you to the Model Maker module. Under the Input Volume drop-down menu, select a volume called Subvolume Scale Underscore One Dash Label. In the Models drop-down menu, select Create New Model Hierarchy. A downside of thresholding ultrasound datasets is that some artificially abrupt edges can be created. The smoothing tool helps remove these edges and minimally alters the overall geometry of the model. You have the option to smooth the model under the Model Maker Parameters button in the Model Maker module. The model can be generated without smoothing if desired. We will apply a small amount of smoothing for this demonstration. Hit Apply to execute the module and generate the model. The model will appear in the blue box of the 4-up viewing window. In the blue box, click the crosshair button to center the image. You can rotate the image by left-clicking and holding while mousing. You can zoom in and out of the image by holding right-click or two-finger click for Mac users and mousing over the image. You can also change the viewing window to 3D only to view the model in a larger format. To save your model, select the Save button. A list of options will be presented in the Save Scene and Unsaved data box. Scroll down until you see the polydata.vtk file. 
In the drop-down menu, change this file to the .stl type. You can also change the name of the file and directory by clicking in the directory column in the row of the polydata file. None of the other files are required for printing and can be unchecked. After selecting the directory and giving the file the name of your choosing, the process is completed. You now have an STL file that can be 3D printed. Although this seems to be a confusing and complicated process, with a little practice, the process can be easily completed in less than five minutes.